Okay, g'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. In today's video, we're gonna be continuing my series of ranking teams after every five rounds. You would have seen I did this after round five, after round 10, and of course, round 15 has just concluded. So we're gonna have another crack at ranking teams in order of which I think are a threat to the premiership. So if you've seen me do this before, you'll understand that obviously we have the ladder which shows, you know, wins and losses and percentage and all that, but I'm just trying to rank sides based on current form to some extent and basically gauge where the league is in terms of form lines and who is a genuine crack at taking out the flag this year. Before we get into the video, do go check out the sponsors of today's video, manscaped.com. If you want elite body grooming products, head to manscaped.com and you can enjoy 20% off and free shipping on their products if you simply use the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word. They have been huge this year in supporting the channel, helping us grow. They help fund the new camera, which I'm recording this video with as well, which is really exciting. And on top of that, they have a great product as well. But all right, let's get into it. We're gonna start from the 18th ranked side that I have on form all the way down to first place. In 18th spot and the team I currently have as the worst team in the competition is the Gold Coast Suns. They've won one of their last five games since I recorded the last video. They had a good win over Hawthorne, but pretty poor performances against Port, North and Fremantle. We know the narrative around Gold Coast, they're a young side that's hiring, they're unable to battle it out for four good quarters and this season is taking a familiar tone for them. For me, I don't think it's panic stations. I've still got faith. I think they're a little bit of a form slump, but their recent loss to North on the weekend gives them last place in the comp based on form rankings. In 17th spot, I have the team that beat Gold Coast on the weekend, North Melbourne, climbing out of last spot. As we know, the Roos were absolutely destroyed by the Dons in round 11 and things were starting to look a little bit bleak. Since then, I'm pleased to say the form has taken a bit of an upturn and things are looking a little bit more encouraging at Arden Street. They had losses by under four goals to St Kilda and Brisbane. They drew with the Giants and of course, they managed to beat the Gold Coast Suns down in Tasmania on the weekend. Given they're six points behind the next worst team, they're probably still going to win the wooden spoon, but I think you have to reward the form that they've shown in the last five rounds, and I think they're not quite as bad as Gold Coast at the moment. In third last spot, despite a good win on the weekend, I've got Hawthorne, who have sort of come out viciously of what was a terrible form slump to put together a pretty good three weeks. At one point, things were looking a bit bleak for Hawthorne. They weren't above the wooden spoon conversation at one point, but their last three weeks probably has taken that pressure off just a little bit. Ironically, they've lost to the two teams Teams that I've ranked below them on this ranking. However, I just think their form overall has been clearly better than those two sides. In the fourth last spot, I have the Adelaide Crows, who ironically, I think are actually having a half decent season in terms of the spirit that they've played with, but the results have been really up and down, and particularly in the last five weeks, it's been a genuine mixed bag. In their last five, they had dramatic wins over Melbourne in particular, that one's really impressive, and of course, their big comeback against St Kilda. But then they've had losses to Richmond, Carlton, and of course, to Collingwood at home as well. Altogether, I think it's a fairly promising season for the Crows, not real too much negativity needed, but I think it's fair they slipped below Carlton after last weekend's results. Next up, we have Carlton, who of course have snapped a three game losing streak with encouraging win over the Crows at Marvel on the weekend. But it has to be said, this has been a little bit of a frustrating five week period for the Blues. In that time, they fell short against the Giants, Eagles and Swans and managed wins against the Crows and Hawthorne. On paper, it's not a terrible run, despite you know the media's really focusing in on Carlton and perhaps right so they've kind of just beaten the teams they're expected to win and fallen short against good sides. Their form has been pretty par for the course based on where they are on the ladder, but they haven't quite done enough to rise up my rankings. Next up, perhaps controversially, Carlton fans won't like this, but I've actually ranked Collingwood ahead of them. Despite going two and three since the last video, I think we've seen a real upturn in the quality of performances. Two of their losses in this period have come against genuine contenders in the Cats and the Power, and they lost those games by 10 points and one point respectively. They had a really good win against Adelaide in Adelaide and of course we all know they knocked off Melbourne a couple of weeks ago as well. Now on the weekend they did drop a very winnable game against Fremantle at Marvel which would be disappointing but overall I think they're playing a more encouraging and better brand of footy than teams like Carlton and Adelaide. Also personally I just think their 22 is stronger than those sides. Next up, we have St Kilda, and true to the rest of their season as a whole, their last five has seen some bizarre swings in form. It started with an 111-point loss to the Western Bulldogs and ended with a surprise 40-point drubbing of Richmond. They did also take two L's against Adelaide and Sydney, and in particular, that Adelaide loss where they had such a big lead would be bitterly disappointing. They're a hard one to rank because they're so up and down, but I think their best form this year probably does shade some teams that I've ranked below them. Further to that, I also think the strength of their 22, when it is firing, is still above those teams I've mentioned as well. 
As the 10th best side in the competition, I have got another team, GWS, with an absolute mixed bag of results since the last time I did this video. Since that video, they've had wins over Carlton and West Coast, losses to Brisbane and Hawthorne, and of course, a draw with North down in Tasmania. To claim two out of a possible eight points against the bottom two sides in Hawthorne and North Melbourne, that is really concerning. And at the moment, GWS' season and their finals chances are in their own hands, and they're turning in performances like that. They're capable of more, but I think on current form, you have to rank them no higher than 10th. In ninth spot, and true to where they are on the ladder, I've got the Fremantle Dockers who have put in a fairly solid run of five games since the last video, going three and two with just losses to the Bulldogs and Port Adelaide. In that five, they had some really good wins over Sydney and Collingwood to remain in touching distance of the top eight. For me, they've been more consistent than the Giants, and that's why they overtake them in this video. It was hard to separate them and Essendon, but I favoured the head-to-head -head winner on that, which was Essendon, who I'll talk about very shortly. In fact, I'll talk about them now. Essendon have put together a pretty good stretch of five of games since the last video and they've only had losses to the Demons and Tigers in that time. They obviously punished North Melbourne by a big margin and then had good wins in tough contests against Hawthorne and the West Coast Eagles in Perth. The improved form and the consistency of that form for me they just slide ahead of GWS and the Dockers. Now I have found it very very difficult to separate 7th and 8th but I'm going to give 8th spot to the Sydney Swans. They haven't had the toughest run of fixtures but have still dropped 3 of their last 5 with losses to Fremantle, Port and Hawthorne. Their wins in this period were decent scraps against teams like Carlton and St Kilda, but it has been a while since we've seen Sydney take a genuine scalp. Their form is obviously a long way off what they showed early in the season, that could be down to fatigue or, you know, just a mid-season slump. But given they've had only moderate success in what is a relatively easy run of fixtures, I can't have them higher than 8th at this point in time. As the 7th best side of the competition, just edging out Sydney, and that could change by the results at the end of this week, I've got the West Coast Eagles. Now, it's been a tough little run for the Eagles there. They've only just won two of their last five games with losses at home to Essendon and the Western Bulldogs. A loss to GWS away in Sydney is fairly forgivable and they had a good win against Richmond in a finals-like atmosphere at Optus, but their loss against the Bulldogs kind of throws all of that out of whack. To be honest, I don't have a strong case for them being higher than Sydney other than the fact that Sydney haven't been in quality form themselves. And just the fact that the Eagles got a bit of a reputation of being around finals, being experienced, I'm probably more likely to tip them to win a final than Sydney on current form. As the sixth biggest threat to the Premiership this year, I've got Richmond and largely this is based on reputation rather than anything we've seen in the last five weeks. They've won two of their last five games with wins over Essendon and the Crows and of course their losses have been West Coast and then two really poor performances against the Lions and Saints. Again, this isn't purely just based on current form, it's also about how much I think this team can threaten finals at the end of the year and frankly I can't conceivably have any of West Coast, Sydney or Essendon higher than Richmond at this point. They are leaving their run very very late to charge at finals and the premiership and I don't think they're going to win the flag but if they make finals I'll be amazed if they don't win at least one. The fifth best side of the competition in my opinion is Port Adelaide who have actually won four of their last five and putting together some decent form. Much has been made about their form against the top sides but when you win four out of five you have to say things are going relatively well. In this period they've done away with likely non-finalists in Collingwood, Gold Coast and Fremantle and then won a bit of a finals preview against Sydney in Adelaide which you have to say is a pretty good win. The only loss in this period was of course against Geelong in Adelaide and that for me just kind of reinforces that Port Adelaide are just slightly one rung below the genuine top four contenders. In fourth spot I'm going to go with the Brisbane Lions and this might be a little bit controversial they're one of the form sides of the competition and just beat Geelong by 44 points. In this period they've also had an 11 goal win over the Giants and beat the Tigers by five goals in Queensland too. The only blip on the radar in the last five games has been what is a fairly respectable loss to the Demons in Sydney. They're an ultra consistent team it's very very rare that anyone upsets the Lions but I just still feel like I have a little bit more faith in the firepower that Geelong have come September so that's why I think Geelong is still a bigger threat. We'll talk about the Cats now they're the third best side in the competition the third most likely to win the Premiership for me and of course they had I think the longest winning streak in the league with six before it was brutally snapped by Brisbane on Thursday night. They kind of coasted two wins against Gold Coast and the Pies but really put the foot down with good wins against Port Adelaide and the Western Bulldogs. As I said understand that it's controversial that I'm putting them above Brisbane, a team that just did them very easily by seven goals. But for me, part of this is also how much faith do I have in these teams in September, and for me, Geelong just edges Brisbane. 
in second spot and just narrowly as the second best team and second most likely to win the flag, I've got the Western Bulldogs who have only won three of their last five, but it hasn't demonstrated just how good they've been in this period. Their two losses out of the last five have been against major contenders in Melbourne and the Cats, but their wins have definitely been ultra impressive. Of course, they beat St Kilda by 111 points, flexing a bit of muscle and really showing the firepower that that team has. And of course, they completely knocked off both Perth teams at Optus Stadium. Their win against the Eagles in Perth was particularly ruthless. And I have to say, if it wasn't for Gary Rowan breaking their hearts after the siren, the dogs would be very close to number one for mine. In top spot, and the team I still see as the best team in the competition and the most likely to win the flag, I've got the Melbourne Demons. Of course, they've been top most of the season, and in my opinion, the clear best team, but they've kind of faltered in their last five fixtures. They've had two losses against the Crows in Adelaide, of course, and of course, Collingwood in Nathan Buckley's last game as coach. One thing I've said for the Demons as well is the fact that they're beating the other contenders when they're going head to head and then dropping games against lesser teams in what can only be described as bad days. What counts for them is that they've knocked off the dogs in this period and they knocked off the Lions as well. For me, I just see them as currently navigating a bit of a form slump and they're still, you know, getting the results to stay on top. And in my opinion, they will come back hard in a big way towards the end of the season. Sweet, there you have it guys. Those are my rankings of the 18 teams in order of how likely I think they are to win the flag. For me, it's very, very tight at the top. I think Melbourne and the Dogs, as the latter suggests, are the two clear best teams in it. And I wouldn't be surprised if they face off in a grand final. And gee, beyond that, looking at the lists and how quality their youth is, it's hard to see these sides not be contested for the next three to four years. As always, I welcome you to let me know in the comments what you thought of my opinions. Were my rankings right? Were they wrong? Tell me where I got it wrong. It's always good to hear from you. Thanks for all the support lately. If you've been watching but aren't subscribed, I'd appreciate you take the time to do that. Do go check out the sponsors of today's video, manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping. Do join us on the True Footy live stream this Sunday as Sydney take on West Coast at GMHBA Stadium. And hopefully you won't be tuning in to me tearing my hair out. Thanks guys. I'll see you in the next video.